Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin and today we are going to continue in our Around the World class. Now this project is a little special. It's made for my friends who are in preschool, kindergarten, or first grade. We're going to have a lot of fun learning about the Australian flag as well as a special little friend that comes from Australia. So get your stuff ready and let's begin. All right, so here is everything that we're doing and making today. So here is our project. Check it out. Is that not the cutest animal you've ever seen? So we're going to make a project where we have the Australian flag in the background, and we're going to put an animal that's from the country in the foreground. So that means towards the front closest to us. Now this little guy is called a quokka, which is an Australian animal, and we'll talk a little bit more about him in just a moment, but this is what we're going to be making today. Now let me show you the stuff that you're going to need in order to make this little furry friend as well as the map, in, or not the map, excuse me, the flag in the background. Now you're just going to need one piece of paper today. I recommend a watercolor paper like all of the stuff we've been doing for Around the World series because again, we are going to be using watercolor today. So you're going to need a watercolor palette as well as some brushes and maybe a bucket or a cup of water. For this project, you're also going to need oil pastels, chalk pastels, um, you're going to need a pencil, a sharpie, or just some kind of permanent marker, as well as an eraser. Now, if you don't have any one of these things, that's okay. Just work with what you have and use what you have available to you, and your project is still going to turn out great. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stuff just out of the way, and we can start on our project. So that means the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take out your paper that you want to do your drawing on. So that means you should be taking out your watercolor paper. Now unlike some of our other things, there is no practice draw for this just because there's a lot to get through and a lot to cover. So we're actually just going to jump right into a final draw and we're just going to start from here. Now again, I want you to start with your pencil and eraser for this. You're going to see me drawing in Sharpie just so that you can see clearly where I want you to draw lines, but you should only be using your pencil right now, okay? So make sure you have your pencil and eraser, but again, I'm going to use Sharpie just so that you can see. Pencil doesn't show up that well on my camera. All righty. Let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw the coca. Now, there are a couple of ways to pronounce coca. I think I'm saying it the British way, uh, but that just makes sense for the way that it's spelled. To do this, we're going to make kind of this almost very squishy looking head. Coca are adorable. So I want you to go kind of towards the top of your paper, right about here. And I want you to make just kind of a long rainbow line like that. So it doesn't take up that much space. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw a curved line down and under like this. Almost like you were about to make a very curved letter L. All right, now you're going to go to the other side. You're going to do a long curved line. So good job. This is going to be the head of the coca. All righty. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw the ears. Now, Quokka have these huge, adorable ears. They kind of look like Mickey Mouse ears. So I want you to go to the top of the head right about here, and I want you to draw one Mickey Mouse ear. So you're going to practice as if you were about to draw a circle. Go to the other side and draw another Mickey Mouse ear. So that's two. Now, if you need to pause the video at any point so that you can just feel comfortable going at your own pace, please feel free to do so, okay? All right, next we want to do the inner part of the ear. So you're going to do that same shape again, except this time you want to make it look like there's an outside part to the ear and an inside part to the ear. Do the same thing on the other side. Do that line one more time. All right, good job. Next, let's go ahead and draw the body. Don't worry, we'll get to the face in just a moment. But we're gonna go ahead and start underneath one of his cheeks and you're just gonna draw a curved line off your paper. Go to the other side, draw a curved line off your paper. And now let's go ahead and draw his face as well as a little pause. 
Now, koka are so popular, actually, because they're known as being the happiest animals on Earth. Kind of funny, considering we just gave him Mickey Mouse ears. This is because they always look like they have a smile on their face. Now, some people think like, oh, maybe are the koka actually smiling? Or is it just the way that their mouth is shaped? It's probably just because of the way their mouth is shaped, but it does make it look like they're very happy, just always. So go ahead and draw two circles for the eyes. If you want, you can draw a little shine on the inside. So just draw another circle on the inside if you want to make his eyes look shiny. For their nose, they have these adorable little noses. You're going to draw a U shape and then a rainbow on top. Then you can go on each side, you're going to draw a letter C and a backward C. All right, now for his smile. So go underneath the nose and I just want you to make a teeny tiny little line. To make his smile, we're going to start on one side. So starting from the line we just made underneath his nose, I want you to draw a curved line up. Go to the other side, draw a curved line up. Then draw a short horizontal line and a short horizontal line. Doesn't it already look like he's smiling? Then we just need to draw a little line down here to show his bottom lip. So just draw a short little line right there. Cute, right? Now, Koka are actually a part of the same family of animals as kangaroos. I wonder if you guys have seen or heard of those before. They're huge and they're really strong and they jump around. Now, Koka, they are much smaller. Koka are about the size of like a cat, a cat that you would have for a pet. So they're pretty small and they're super adorable. They're herbivores, so that means that they mostly eat leaves and plants. And they're mostly nocturnal, so they usually like to be around um, and up and doing things at nighttime. All right, so let's go ahead and draw these paws. Now, Koka, they have these teeny tiny little paws. Um, they're really adorable. I encourage you to look up some pictures of them later. So go ahead, start from about here, and we're just going to draw a diagonal line. You're going to draw a U shape and then another little diagonal or slanted line. They hold their paws quite close to their bodies. So we're gonna draw again another little paw right here along with his arm. So draw a diagonal line. Draw a U shape. And then draw another diagonal line. Then if you wanna add some lines to show his little paws, Go for it. All right, and that's the coca. Next, we're going to draw the flag of Australia in the background. Now, this flag can be a little tricky. You can see there are a lot of lines and a lot of stars that we have to take care of. Don't worry, I'm going to give you some easy ways to go about this, but just try and follow along with me, okay? Now again, you should be doing this in pencil, but the first thing I want you to do is we're going to draw this section over here that was with the all those diagonal and crisscrossing lines. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to start right about here, about in the middle of your paper, and I want you to draw a line that goes down and touches the top of your coca's head. All right, next you're going to go ahead and go to this side of your coca right on his cheek and you're going to draw a horizontal line off the edge of your paper. All right, you guys, next we have to draw that plus sign that's on the inside of this flag here. Now this is actually called the Union Jack. Australia used to be um, a part of the United Kingdom, which we learned about a couple weeks ago or quite, quite a while ago. So for this, what you're going to do, I'm going to make it super easy on you. I want you to start right about here on your paper, right at the very tippy top. I want you to draw a number 11 and stop right about here, right at the edge of your coca's ear. Next, I want you to draw a horizontal line 
and a horizontal line. You might have to jump over the coca's ear. Alrighty. Next, I want you to go down a little bit. I want you to draw another number 11. Try and see if you can make it line up with the number 11 from before. Next, you're going to start from this little side and you're going to draw another horizontal line and another horizontal line. Now, we're not going to see the other part of this plus sign because, again, our coca is in the way. All right, good job. You did the plus sign. Next, we're going to make the other parts of the flag. Now, if you look here, we just drew this red part. Do you see that? That red plus sign. Next, I want you to take your pencil and I want you to draw these lines here. Now, I did this in oil pastel or went over it in oil pastel later after I used my pencil. It's going to look quite dark with my Sharpie, but you're still doing this in pencil. So you're not going to be able to see it once we go over it in coloring. So still, I want you to take your pencil, start from this little corner right here. You're going to draw a diagonal line that goes off the edge of your paper. Same thing, other side, diagonal line. Oops, hop over the coca's ear. Continue off your paper. Now go to this corner. Again, you're going to draw a diagonal line to the edge of your paper. Go to the other corner, draw a diagonal line, and stop, because there's your coca's head. All right, next we're going to draw pizza slices because do you see how there are these little blue areas right here in between all of those sections? That's because these red parts are outlined with white. So the first thing I want you to do is go to the top of your paper. We're going to go over here and do this first pizza slice. And what you're going to do is you are going to draw a short line down like this. And then you're going to draw another diagonal line up. You have one pizza slice. All right, let's go over here. I want you to start right about here. And you're going to draw a horizontal line. And then you're going to draw another diagonal line to make a pizza slice. All right, it's going to start looking a little tricky on your eyes here because there's a lot of crisscrossing lines. So try and really focus in. I want you to go to this area next. I want you to draw again another horizontal line and then draw another diagonal line or a slanted line and make a pizza. You're going to go to this section next, draw a straight line up and then draw another slanted line, another pizza slice. Now this pizza slice, we're not going to see a lot of it, but I still want you to try. So I want you to go ahead and still draw a straight line up. Draw a diagonal line. Alrighty. Next one, I want you to go to this pizza slice right here. You're again going to draw a straight line down and a diagonal line out. All right, last one, it's this area. But hey, our little Coca's ear, he's covering some of it. So what I want you to do, start from the edge of your square. Draw a short line in. And then from your Coca's ear right about here, I want you to draw a diagonal line that touches the edge of your square. And then, oh my goodness, pat yourself on the back. You did it, you drew the Union Jack. It's so tricky, but you made it through. All right, next we have some stars we get to put on the Australian flag. Now the Australian flag has a couple of different stars and they mean a couple of different things. Now there is a seven pointed star that goes over here on the Australian flag and that represents the unity of the six states of Australia. So Australia is made of those six states. And then the seventh point on the star represents any future states that might go to Australia. Then there are a bunch of stars that are gonna go over here. These are actually a representation of a constellation, a group of stars in the night sky that you can see in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a reminder to Australia where it is in the world. Now, the trickiest star is going to be that seven-pointed star, so I want you to try and watch closely, and then pace yourself, erase if you need to, and you can always pause the video and try things out. All right, for the seven-pointed star, I want you to go right about here, 
And I want you to draw just a little mountain like this. Next, I want you to draw another little mountain. And then another little mountain, but this time it's going to almost look like a sideways V. Then you're going to make another V shape. And then another V shape. Sideways V shape. And then another mountain. Now again, that can be a little tricky. You can pause the video and try that out if you need to change anything. But what's most important is that you have this star that has seven sides. You can even count them to make sure you cut them all. Next, we are going to go ahead and work on the stars over here. Now again, these are representing the Southern Cross, which is a constellation in the sky. Our quokka is actually covering up one of the stars that would be over here, but we can still draw these ones. So for this, you can either do a seven-pointed star if you want to try and practice that as much as you can, or you can just draw a regular star. I know that those can be a little bit challenging for you, so I want you to just do what you're comfortable with, okay? So go ahead and make a star. We want to start one right here. So go ahead and make a star right here. I'm going to draw those seven pointed stars just so that you can see them drawn if you need to practice them. Next, you're going to draw a star right here. So this one's going to be closest to the edge of your paper on the right side. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more. And then you're gonna make a little teeny tiny star right here. And last but not least, there's one more star down here that you need to make. This is the bottom of the Southern Cross constellation. Now, some of it, again, might get covered up by the quokka. It's pretty big. It takes up a lot of space, but he's so cute. How could we not let him? And once you finish that last star, that's all the drawing steps. Now, next what I want you to do is I want you just to Sharpie your coca. I'm gonna leave these lines like this with my Sharpie lines just so that you can see everything that we made, but I only want you to outline and Sharpie your coca. And in fact, I'm gonna show you a picture of what it should look like once your coca is Sharpied. Do you see how I didn't Sharpie our stars or the Union Jack? Don't Sharpie any of those, only Sharpie your animal. Okay, so go ahead and pause. Just take the uh, take a moment to sharpie only the coca, and this is going to be technically our first coloring step. All right. So again, pause the video if you just need to take some time to do that, and once you're ready, resume the video, and we can move on. All righty. So. Since you're resuming the video, I assume that you're ready to keep going. So remember, I want you to uh, practice saying the country that we visited and that we're visiting currently, which is Australia. So say Australia. And then if you want to know what the capital of Australia is, it's Canberra. So say Canberra. Good job. Now, some of you might actually know a city in Australia already called Sydney because Finding Nemo actually takes place in Sydney. Let's begin on some coloring. So with your Sharpie in hand, I want you to color in the eyes of your coca. If you want, you can even add two little curves underneath, two little rainbows underneath to make them look even more happy. Then I want you to take your Sharpie and fill in his nose. You can leave his little nostrils white just so that they stand out. So this is what you should have so far. All right, 
Next, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take out our chalk pastels. So I want you to go ahead and set your Sharpie aside and take out your chalk pastels. Now, if you don't have chalk pastels, that's okay. Maybe you can just use a different material that you have. You could do colored pencil, or if you really have it, you could do marker. Um, but I do recommend chalk pastels if you have it. It's just gonna make it go a lot faster. Now, coca, they are usually brown in color. Um, so for that today, I'm actually gonna do like a very light brown or like a tan. So I'm gonna take this sort of goldish tan color first. Now with the chalk pastel, I want us to use this flat part of the tip. Do you see that? It's kind of a flat part of the tip right there. And very lightly, I want you to just outline the inside of the coca. Now, fun fact about these guys, these little animals, they're super friendly. So not only are they the happiest animals on earth, they're really, really friendly. So friendly that people usually take incredible selfies with them. All right, now with this same color, I want you to put it flat on its side, like it's sleeping on your paper. I want you to pinch and pull, pinch and pull, pinch and pull on your paper to add a little bit more color. You do not need a lot. You can even see I didn't even add that much. Don't forget about your ears. And then I want you to take one finger or two. And I want you to use little circles to blend the chalk pastel. Just try and keep that on the inside of your coca because we are going to do different colors in our background. So only blend the inside part of your coca. See how careful you can be. Alrighty, next we're gonna switch to a different color. I want you now to find maybe a darker brown in your chalk pastel. So for me, I see this color right here. It's a little bit of a darker brown. And what I want you to do with this, again, still using that kind of flat part of the chalk pastel, I want you to just do just tiny little strokes on the sides of his cheeks right here. So do those tiny little strokes. You should look like this when you're done. Next, I want you to do the same thing right above his nose, right here. So just add teeny tiny little strokes. Next, I want you to add this color on the insides of his ears. Next, we're gonna add it to his paws. Now, Coca, Sometimes their paws are actually a slightly different or a slightly darker color than the rest of their fur. So that's why we're gonna make his paws covered with this darker color. All right, now I want you to go ahead and set that back in your box. Take one finger, definitely not two this time. And I want you to just very softly, softly blend that chalk pastel we just put down. This is just to give them a little bit of shading, a little bit of color. So that he looks a little bit more realistic. Don't forget to blend the ears and then you can blend his paws. All right, I bet you thought we were done. We actually have one more thing that we're going to do. I want you to take out that same color again, that same brown you just used. I want you to find a pointy little tip of your chalk pastel. So not the flat part, but the pointy part of the tip. And I want you to do just short little lines all over our little furry friend to give him some texture for his fur. So teeny tiny short little lines all over him. You could even do short horizontal lines. And you don't have to put them everywhere if you don't want to. If you wanna do just maybe a couple long lines like this, you can. Now the great thing is, is if you don't like maybe where you put that one little spot, you can just take your finger and gently blend it in. And all it's gonna do is look like shading when you're done. Just to give you a little example. All right, 
So there he is. He is all done. Now we just have our flag to work on. But hey, check out your hands. Are your hands dirty like mine? Look at all this chalk pastel I have on there. If your hands are dirty like mine, let's just take a moment to clean them off. I have these hand wipes here that I'm going to use to wipe off my hands. But if you just want to pause the video and maybe go wash your hands in the sink or just go rinse them off real quick, go ahead and pause the video and do so. All right, so really getting that chalk pastel off my hands, all clean. I'm gonna go ahead and set my wipes aside. I'm gonna set my chalk pastels aside as well. And I'm now gonna take out my oil pastels. So here are my oil pastels. If you don't have oil pastel, I might recommend using crayon or you could even use maybe a colored pencil for some of these parts um, if you really want. All right, so with the oil pastel, the first thing I want us to do is I want us to work on this Union Jack part of the flag. Again, this is to represent that Australia was once a part of the United Kingdom. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a red oil pastel. And what I want you to do is I don't want you to fill it in with this color. All I want you to do is outline those lines that we drew. Now remember, you did this in pencil. I just did it in Sharpie so that you can see. I just want you to outline the plus sign with this red oil pastel. So just that plus sign that's on the middle. If you're having a hard time finding that on your paper, maybe you can wait until I'm done showing you where to outline. And then you can play sort of a matching game with yourself where you look at the screen to see where the red outline is and you look at your own paper to see where you need to put it. So remember, we're just outlining this plus sign in the middle. Alrighty, next we're gonna go ahead and outline those diagonal lines that are coming out from the plus sign. But watch and see which four I'm going to outline. So again, I'm starting from this little corner. I wanna outline this one. I want to outline this one. Remember, our Koka's ear is kind of covering it. This one. And this one, again. Our little friend here is covering a lot of it. So those are the four diagonal lines that you want to try and outline. Just try your best. Remember, you can pause the video and just look at this uh, to see where you need to put it. Alrighty, last but not least, we are going to use a dark blue to outline some things. Do you remember those pizzas that we made? Those tiny little pizzas? I want you to take a dark blue and outline all of your pizzas. So you're gonna go around this little part of the flag and you're gonna outline all of the pizzas. Again, if you need to pause the video just to see where are the pizzas that I need to outline, go ahead and do so. Even this one out just a little bit. There we go. Alrighty. Now, if you want to outline this line right here and this line right here with the blue, go for it. I won't stop you. You can see on my flag, I did something a little special. Those little pizzas eventually go into the blue of the flag. So I actually didn't outline the lines that connect the pizza to the rest of the flag. I only outlined like where I would want the white stripes and stuff to be. But if that's too hard for you, you're like, Miss Caitlin, I don't know where that should go. That's okay. Let's just make it easy on ourselves and just outline this line and this line in blue. All right. Now we are going to outline a couple more things with this blue, but I want to do a different color first. I want you to take a white oil pastel or a white crayon, and I want you to fill in all of the stars that we made. Now, if you're using pencil or something else for this part, you could um, still color maybe these in with white. That's gonna help with this next step. But you could, of course, just leave the paper blank there. But if you do have a white oil pastel or a white crayon, I would encourage you to just take the time to fill in your stars. 
Now, of course, we're going to be using white oil pastel on white paper. So it's going to be kind of hard to see. Just trust yourself. If you feel yourself and you kind of see that you're coloring it, the white color is definitely going to be there, even if you don't quite see it yet. Just try your best to fill things in as you can. All right, then guys, fun fact. Did you know Australia is a country and a continent? It's true. Australia is actually so big, it's the sixth largest country in the world. All right, you guys, so again, fill in your stars. And after you've done that with your oil pastel, take your blue oil pastel one more time and you're gonna outline your stars. This is just gonna help it look a little bit more neat once we go over it with watercolor. Now guys, we're not gonna to get to draw it in class today, but did you know the Great Barrier Reef is off of the coast of Australia? I wonder how many of you know about the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef is basically this huge chunk that is underneath the ocean that is just coral and all of its different little fish and different organisms and life. It's very colorful. It's really beautiful. Now some of it today has gone through coral bleaching. That just means the coral, the water got too hot and the coral couldn't survive there anymore. But there are still some really beautiful parts of the Great Barrier Reef that you can still see. And again, the movie Finding Nemo actually takes place not only in Sydney, which is one of the biggest cities in Australia, but also at the Great Barrier Reef at the beginning and the end, if you've ever seen it. All right, you guys, so that is our oil pastel step. Go ahead and set those aside. And now it's time for watercolor, my personal favorite part. Now I'm gonna set my watercolors over here. I'm left-handed, so putting things on this side is a little bit tricky for me because it gets in the way. Mm -hmm. But I do have my water bucket and my brushes off to the side here. Now first I want us to color in just the plus sign and our blue pizzas in the flag. So go ahead and get maybe a medium-sized brush you're going to get some water on it, wipe it off, and we're going to pick a red color first. Now with this red color, I want you to just paint in the plus sign. Nothing more, nothing less. Remember, keep an eye on how much water you have on your brush and try not to really jab into your paint. Be very gentle. Make sure that you're just petting the paint, kind of like if you were going to pet a coca, if you've got to see one. Okay. Again, if you need to pause the video, if you need more time, please do so. But next, we are gonna go ahead and fill in the blue parts of the little pizzas here. Now for this, you're gonna to wanna to pick a nice dark, deep blue. A color that would look like the sky just before it turns to complete nighttime. And let's go ahead and take our brush and fill in those little pizzas. Just the ones that we outlined with the blue. Now remember, this part can be a little tricky. So if you're like Miss Caitlin, I'm not quite sure which ones I need to color in, that's okay. Maybe just pause the video after I fill them all in so that you can see which ones that you need to fill in. So that's what it should look like when you're done painting it in. So again, pause the video if you need to, to just kind of see that for yourself and play that matching game with yourself. All right, once you have all those little pizza slices filled in, guess what? That part of the map, or not the map, excuse me, the flag is done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the rest of the flag. Now the rest of the flag is also that same color blue and we're gonna do a really fun technique called wet into wet. So I want you to try and say that it's wet into wet, okay? 
So what you're going to do, you're going to need a pretty big brush for this one. Get your brush nice and wet with just water on it. Take just the water on your brush, and I want you to paint this section right here with just pure water. Careful not to go over the coca. You just want to do this space right here. Next, take your brush, get the blue paint that you were using before, and you're going to tap, 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 to fill in the flag. Now my blue, it's kind of hard to see on here, but my blue is actually pretty translucent. That just means it's kind of see-through. So I might need to use a lot more blue than normal which is a-okay. If your blue paint does the same, that's also okay. Now, the great thing about this is if you used white oil pastel on your stars, if you paint over your star, look at that, it doesn't mix. What's fun about it is if I got a clean brush and I just gently wiped off that blue, and I took like a paper towel and I just tapped that off, it goes away. Oil and water don't mix. So again, we're taking our blue paint and we're just filling in this little spot right here. Now, if you don't really want to do the wet into wet technique and you just want to paint this normally with your blue, that's fine too. Do whatever is more comfortable for you to paint. It's just if you wanted to try a new watercolor technique, here it is. Now later after your painting dries, if you're thinking, hmm, I think it might need to be a darker blue. That's great. I'm glad you're thinking that way about your artwork. Just make sure that it's dry and then you can add another layer or just add more color on top. You can also see that not only am I doing the tapping in the wet into wet technique, I'm also kind of helping the water a little bit, help him do his work. Wet into wet, I think of it like you and the watercolor are kind of like a team. And you're trying to fill in a whole part of the paper. All right, next, clean off your brush really well. Take just clean water, pure water. And I want you to paint just this top half with the pure water. Again, try not to go over your coca. We're just doing this top half right here. Once you've put down the pure water, then you can go ahead and wrap color on your brush. You can tap, tap, tap away. Look at that. See the watercolor in me? We're working together to fill in all of that space. Maybe I might help it a little bit, like see, it didn't go right there. I'm just going to fill in all of those white spaces. So we're working together to fill in all of the flag. Going right up next to the edge, when you get to your cocoa, remember, be very careful. You don't want him to turn blue. Just try your best to go around him. It's okay if you get a little paint on him, though. I'm sure he understands. All right, getting right up next to the edge. Now, if you want a secret watercolor technique or more of a brush technique, you can see I just did something kind of fancy there. Instead of holding my brush flat, I used the very tippy top of the brush. So I stood it straight up and down, and that way I'm able to use the tip of the brush to get that really nice line, that really clean edge. Alrighty, once you get this top half filled in, you've done your wet into wet and you like how it looks, let's go ahead and do wet into wet on the bottom half of the flag. So again, wipe off your brush, use plain water and paint, 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 just the plain water. Take your color and tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. All 
looks like I might need a little bit more water on my brush to help with the wet and to wet. Again, I'm thinking really carefully about how much water is on my brush so I don't accidentally get a puddle. Now, if you do get a puddle, it's bound to happen, so don't worry. Just take a paper towel and very gently soak up some of that extra water and some of that extra color that might be turning into a puddle on your paper. So we don't want that there. All right. Now, once you're done with your wet and to wet, look around your paper, say, hey, are there any little white spaces of the paper that I can still see on the blue part of this flag? The answer is yes, you can kind of see I'm doing the same thing. I'm filling in any little spaces that I missed. And then ta-da, we are done. That's it. We have made our project and visited Australia. So remember, the country we visited today was Australia. So I want you to say that again. Say Australia. Okay, the capital is Canberra. So say Canberra. Good job. And then I want you to practice saying the animal that we learned today, which is the coca. So let's say coca. Good job. All right, you guys. So that again, that's the project. I hope you've had a lot of fun. Okay, so now that you're done, remember you can share your picture with us on our Fibo Village Facebook page. I'm sure everyone would love to see the work that you did and learn about the coca. I don't think a lot of people probably know about the happiest animal on earth, and you should be sure to tell them about it. So I hope you'll join us next time for our next Around the World project. Again, if you have any questions or if you just want to share your artwork, share that on the Fibo Village Facebook page, and I'll try to answer it as best I can. I will see you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Bye for now.